Hey everybody, welcome to the Great Big Story YouTube channel. I'm Jillian. I'm Dave. Welcome to the show. Here at Great Big Story, we love animals. And first, we're gonna head underwater and meet a guy who swims with sea lions. I kind of compare it with being at a giant dog park. Some of them love it. Like you start giving them armpit scratches and they're just like giant dogs. They just start rolling around and they're flying all around you. But these animals are huge. People are intimidated by them, but once you, once you learn their behavior, they're just right into you right away. They just look at you like a big chew toy. I could never see myself living anywhere other than the Pacific Northwest. I could literally spend every single day the rest of my life and never travel anywhere other than Vancouver Island and I would still never have enough time to see this whole place. My first introduction to the ocean would have definitely come from my mom. She's me with the sea lion right there. Later on in life, I realized that it is a pretty unique experience to get to go out and spend time with these animals on a regular basis. Sea lions are a large, intelligent animal and they're very sensitive of what your intentions are and, and how they choose to interact with you is totally their choice. If you're comfortable and, and they're inquisitive, they'll come and they'll chew on your fins or they come up and they chew on the edge of your mask or give you big kisses on the lips or big hugs. They wrap your, their fins around you and give you a big hug. People get sketched out about it. Like I've had lots of people contact me and be like, don't you think those things are aggressive? Just because an animal's putting its mouth on you doesn't mean it's doing it in a harmful way. They don't have hands, they can't explore their world with anything other than their mouth. There's people that spend man, a lot of money to travel to the other side of the planet to watch a group of large migratory animals in Africa or something say, and here I can just go out on my boat. And it's not something I take for granted at all anymore, having the opportunity to do this. Now we're gonna whisk you off to Costa Rica and meet a woman who brings street dogs into her sanctuary. And there are so many dogs, you might find your best friend here. One core trait in every dog is its ever forgiving nature. That's probably the most valuable thing in a dog and it's also its biggest pitfall because we have dogs here who've been horribly hurt by human beings and yet all they wanna do is find somebody else to love. Around the world, strays, mutts, and street dogs are victims of stigma. In Costa Rica, Leah Battle is trying to change that story. She runs the Territorio de Suguates. It's a lush haven for stray dogs to either be adopted or to live out the rest of their days. Territorio de Suguates stands for Land of the Mutts. My name's Leah Battle, better known as Crazy Dog Lady, I guess. I started Territorio de Suguates partly because I've always loved animals, all animals. But it wasn't in my plans. It wasn't like I set out to do this. The need for this, I think all over the world, is because there's a huge stigma around a dog that doesn't have a breed. They'll let mutts wander on the streets or they'll actually toss them on the streets because they're not breed dogs. The solution isn't euthanizing a dog. The solution is make sure it's not born in the first place. Once it's here, do something good for it. Find a home, or if not, at least offer him a place where he can be in peace and happy. Keeping Territorio up and running is no easy feat. They eat $500 a day in food alone. Leah has to work a full-time job to keep all the dogs fed and healthy. Territorio stays about, partly through miracles, I think. Keeping this afloat is a huge task. It's a labor of love. You can't pay someone to care for an animal truly, um, to remember their names, to be gentle to them. While this place is a dog heaven, nothing beats getting adopted by a loving family. I'd say it's like kids at kindergarten. They love their friends at school, but oh, they all want to go home to mom and dad.
Next, we'll travel to India, where a man feeds 8,000 birds twice a day on his rooftop. Which I can't even believe because I think these guys are hard enough to take care of. In Chennai, India, there's a tiny camera repair shop run by a man named Joseph Sekar. Sekar got his nickname because every day he feeds thousands of hungry parakeets on the roof of his home. The 2006 tsunami that hit Southeast Asia flooded parts of India and displaced thousands of birds. Sekar noticed a pair of parakeets outside of his home and set some rice out for them. Then more started to show up. And well... Feeding 8,000 parakeets twice a day is a great expense. Sekar spends about 40% of the money he makes from repairing cameras buying food for the birds. But for the birdman of Chennai, there is more to life than money. Now we're gonna hit the high seas and meet a man sailing around the world. And he's got an unusual companion along with him. When you're young, on te demande qu'est-ce que tu veux faire, mais avant de savoir qu'est-ce que je veux faire, moi j'aimerais bien savoir où j'ai envie d'être. At only 24 years old, Guérec Soudé is aboard a 30-foot boat sailing around the world completely on his own. Donc moi ça c'était vraiment un rêve depuis tout petit de faire ce, ce tour du monde. Enfin vraiment qui n'a pas qui ne rêve pas de voyager comme ça, de faire plein de pays, de, de rencontrer plein de personnes et ouais, j'aime ça. J'ai quand même accumulé quelques milles en distance, c'est entre 15 et 20 milles. He left his home in France two and a half years ago to begin his journey. Je suis arrivé d'abord en Espagne, après j'ai fait le Portugal, j'ai longé les côtes africaines, et là je suis arrivé aux Caraïbes, puis après je suis arrivé au Groenland où je suis resté un an, puis après j'ai fait ce qu'on appelle le passage du Nord-Ouest, donc pour partir de l'Atlantique, euh, pour arriver dans le Pacifique, par le, euh, par le nord des, de l'Amérique en fait. Alors le voyage il va se terminer quand on sera de retour en France. Je suis un peu particulier dans le sens où j'ai beaucoup d'amis, mais j'aime beaucoup me retrouver seul. Bah, d'être tout seul, euh, bah c'est génial quoi, c'est vraiment super. Although he's been navigating alone, he's found an unlikely companion. Je suis quand même accompagné de Monique. Je rêvais d'avoir une poule avant même d'avoir mon bateau. Donc je m'étais renseigné auprès d'experts en France, on m'avait dit impossible, si elle est stressée, elle ne peut pas pondre. Monique, j'ai trouvé au Canary et premier jour sur le bateau, Momo m'a fait un œuf et en, en 28 jours, elle m'en a pondu 25. Donc euh, autant dire qu'elle est plutôt à l'aise quoi. Bah, avec Monique, nous on est, on est curieux et on voulait savoir comment ça se passe pour avoir notre propre avis. J'aime bien euh, en fait me retrouver dans des situations un petit peu critiques et compter que sur moi et c'est vraiment très intéressant. Cet hivernage quand t'es pris dans les glaces, tu te demandes ce que tu fais là quoi, vraiment. T'as qu'une envie, c'est qu'on vienne te chercher Il y a même des moments, mais moi je, je, je donnerai mon bateau, je payerai toute ma vie pour qu'on me sorte de là. Quoi. Après le lendemain, eh ben, le soleil est de retour, le vent s'est calmé, Monique a pondu un œuf et la vie recommence. Quoi.
Thanks for stopping by, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed these four awesome animal stories. And speaking of animals, click the horse above us to subscribe and don't forget to comment. See you later. Bye. Bye.